Okay, so my Tabor City home here. Um, coming up on a year now, we bought this property, and uh, this is actually about an acre, three quarters of an acre behind our house. And one of the things I wanted to do with that was to clear it up, get rid of all these trees, all the all the uh, undergrowth and to eventually be able to use this as a more of a backyard kind of a space than than what it is right now and to that end I bought a Ford 550 backup and I bought this online uh, I actually purchased it through an online site that a lot of people buy stuff on and uh, got it at a really good deal what I consider to be a really good deal fair price um, sight unseen I had not gone up and looked at it uh, actually the guy who I had haul it from where I got it from to to my house uh, said I was crazy uh, it wouldn't move under its own power although I will say that I've never really had any problems with the motor uh, the motor came it was in what I considered to be good shape uh, to this date I've never had any real problems with that and hydraulics work real well there's some minor leaks and some cylinders and some things like that but other than that i would classify this as a strong backhoe now the guy who sold it to me said uh, when he sold it that the it wouldn't go in forward or reverse um, he classified that as a shuttle body issue a valve body issue excuse me um, said if valve body was going to need to be rebuilt and that that was the issue with it not going into gear uh, since that time, I've already gone through, and there is a, a, a valve body on top of the transmission over where the hydraulic pump is. Uh, has some pins and springs and things in there, and uh, I've gone through and rebuilt that, and uh, still no luck. Um, you can put the backhoe up in the air on the outriggers, uh, lift the rear tires off the ground, put it in gear. Uh, initially, right after I changed the valve body, it, you could get uh, with some RPM you could get the front or the rear tires to spin um, but they didn't really have any force even when you would go down and hit the uh, differential locking button which is right there it, it really didn't have any force to it you could reach down with your hand and stop the rear wheels from spinning so um, back to the drawing board checking some other things uh, I've spoke to a gentleman uh, who worked all of his life on tractors and farm equipment and construction equipment and he went through the standard questions some of these Ford 555s uh, up here on the lever that controls the actual uh, bucket had a had a button on top of the lever and that lever would activate a solenoid that would be down here on on top of the transmission and, and allow you to go into gear and some of them actually over here by the brake pedal had a button on the floor um, as you can see this has neither and so uh, the next part of this was to go up under the backo itself and there is an inspection port and going and looking at this inspection port uh, I went ahead and put a pressure gauge a pressure tester right here you have to take out these four bolts and then put a pressure tester right here and was registering zero pressure so one of the things people have told me is here in the gearbox that there's a screen that picks up the the hydraulic fluid and runs it through transmission the screen can get blocked so one of the ideas i had was i took my air compressor and i got a fitting and i hooked it to this and i blew air backwards through the transmission into the fluid uh, hoping that that would remedy it and then drain the fluid here and uh, went through that took a real good look at the fluid after it came out didn't have any real issues um, fluid appeared you know to be fairly normal had a little bit of condensation in it but everybody says Ford uh, industrial equipment will get condensation in hydraulic fluid fairly easy um, but that was about it so still no pressure in the transmission at all so the two things that I've been told will lead to no pressure in transmission fluid is the uh, torque converter 
or the uh, hydraulic pump. Now, if you do go back to where this inspection area is, and you look up there with a flashlight inside there, you lift the rear wheels off the ground, and you put it in neutral and look up there, then there is the torque converter should be spinning. If the torque converter is not spinning, there is something called a flex plate that attaches between the flywall, flywheel, excuse me, and the torque converter. If that, and that flex plate can break. If the flex plate breaks, your motor will be turning over, but your torque converter will not be moving. And so that's one way to diagnose you have a bad flex plate. Um, my torque converter was spinning normally, and so uh, that would lead me to one or two conclusions primarily, and that would be that either I have a bad torque converter or I have a bad hydraulic pump because again I'm not getting any pump pressure if I had pump pressure um, then I would start looking at the clutches which this is a shuttle shift uh, the way you know it's a shuttle shift is up here this is your shuttle it would take you to reverse and to forward it would take you to uh, into gear and normally, from what I'm being told, again, you know, this is my first piece of heavy equipment, but normally from what I'm being told is both clutches aren't going to fail at the same time. Could happen, not normal. You would probably be able to get it a little bit in reverse, but not much in forward or totally lose reverse, but have forward. Uh, I did talk to a gentleman who's more familiar with case and he said there's, I think, three rings in the clutches for the rear. And they're not true clutches like a clutch disc, but they're they're more impregnated rings. Um, but there's three for reverse and like six or seven for forward. So you have a, a lot better chance of your reverse uh, being the issue than you do forward because there's less there to grip on. And, and they do that because you're not going to be obviously pushing dirt in reverse. So... Um, we've pretty much gone to the diagnostic phase. Uh, this is going to lead to us having to actually break the unit in half. And that was something that I tremendously wanted to avoid. Um, but we're going to do it. And so I went through, I do have the service manual for 4555. The service manual does recommend that we go ahead and we remove, you know, the front bucket, front booms, everything. It's, I, the gentleman who's helping me, who, again, worked on these things for forever and a day, <clears throat> says that this is not necessary. You don't, he understands a forward makes a safety recommendation and, and they do, you know, what they do. They have their reasons. Um, but he absolutely never remove the bucket to, to break these things in half um it's just time consuming he's he was in a shop where they did a large volume of equipment they didn't have time to do that so basically you raise the bucket um i went to a local agricultural industrial shop and got two of these angle irons um the angle is on both pistons here holding this up um, so it won't it won't sag down while we're doing our work uh, we have some hydraulic lines and other things that we're going to have to um, take apart and then we're going to be um, bracing this up. I went and got some railroad ties from, from a friend of mine. We're going to be um, unbolting it, bracing this up, getting a jack under here, uh, unbolting this, taking some of the hydraulics off, and then we will be separating the tractor. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to make this particular video and put it on this channel is I have looked everywhere. Uh, on YouTube for a video on clutches or diagnosing of transmission problems and can't really find anything uh, so to speak of the the thing about it is if you go on the forums and I've been all over the forums on the internet talking about four, five Ford 555s and transmission issues is that uh, it seems to be pretty prevalent at some point every you know at some point every piece of equipment is going to have an issue with whether it be clutches or whatever but all of these transmission issues seem to be pretty prevalent not saying at all that ford is a is is bad equipment because i mean i own fords i love fords um but it's just inherent to what it is and, and again this is a 1981 piece of machinery so you know we're talking 
coming up on 40 years old, you know. So this, uh, there's just not any videos available on how to do this. I saw a lot for some other manufacturers. I didn't really see anything as far as how to get into a Ford 555 and try to diagnose any transmission issues or break them in half and, and rectify the problem. So um, this is just a video talking about what I went through to try to diagnose it. As you can see, I've already started to remove the, the hood on it. Uh, I'm emptying all the fuel out of the gas tank. Um, getting ready to actually start disconnecting everything and trying to break this tractor and see what we can do to get it working um as soon as i can get through some of that other part i will post another video and uh, show the progress of where i'm at and how things are going all right hope you guys have a great day uh as always we're here at Tabor city my Tabor city home we have both a facebook page and a youtube channel and uh, if, if you would be kind enough to like and subscribe, if you click down there on that like button, it, it actually will help us uh, be able to produce more of these kind of videos and, and more videos. Ultimately, um, this home that I bought, we're going to be remodeling the entire inside, rewiring, replumbing, re-everything. Um, and so you're hitting that little thumbs up button down there is going to going to kind of help with that a little bit and uh, subscribing to the channel will just give you notification when we post more videos on on how to fix this stuff and and do a little bit of home construction stuff uh, appreciate your support and we'll see you later you have a good day